Hello and welcome to this video on SSTV. Today we're going to do a uh, presentation covering SSTV and how it can be downloaded, installed and run. And I'm going to do this on Raspbian which is the operating system you'll get with a Raspberry Pi because I intend to tie this in with other Raspberry Pi videos I'll be doing. So at this point I'll assume that you've installed Raspbian which uh, I'll do a video on in the future it's up and running and this is the screen you'll see so from this point onwards it'll all be uh, showing you how to install SSTV and this is a Linux based system a GNU Linux system so the SSTV application we use is something called QSSTV it's a feature rich very capable program and we'll get started so you'll notice here if you're only familiar with Windows or Mac that the menu bar is along the top of the screen here on this particular system. Other than that it works in a similar manner so if we go up to the top here we have the uh, equivalent of a start button the panel drops down and gives you options on applications that are already installed and today I'm going to show you how to install programs not using the typical method of installing but uh, something a bit more specific to this uh, GNU Linux system. So what we're going to use is something called the terminal which you may have heard of a lot of people have looked at it and and been uh, frightened away with it but once you get to know it uh, even a little bit I think you'll find it very handy. So the first step is to click on the terminal icon at the top here this will load up the terminal and it's a command line type system so as we issue commands uh, into the terminal it will carry out the orders we've given it so we're going to use a program called apt apt this program gives us the facility to search a database of programs find out information about them and install them the way that Linux works is different from what uh, Windows users may be used to and uh, to a certain extent Mac users as well in that Linux has something called a repository uh, which is essentially a, a computer somewhere out there uh, that acts as a server and it has something in the order of uh, 50 to 60,000 programs on it I believe they're all free of charge um, and you can come and go as you please download and install any of them and it's generally very easy to use pretty foolproof and it gives you a, a fantastic access to programs that you would normally pay many many uh, dollars or pounds for if you're buying them from a shop you also have the convenience of doing it all online uh, as well so this Raspberry Pi setup is equivalent to being connected to the internet either with a cable or through Wi-Fi and uh, we'll begin I will just point out this isn't actually a Raspberry Pi I'm doing this is actually a Raspberry Pi operating system running in something called VirtualBox and VirtualBox is a way of um, running computer systems in a, in a pretend way if you like so uh, it's essentially in a window on my computer uh, rather than running on my actual computer itself you don't need to worry about any of that but just to just to make you aware that this isn't actually a Raspberry Pi I'm using so let's begin so the first command we want to type is to search the database to see if it has the program that we want in order for us to do that we're going to issue a command first of all to update our list of programs on the repository and we'll do that now. We use the command sudo apt update. Now there's three words here update, we want it to update our list. apt is the program that does that. The first word here, sudo, is a uh, request for a higher level of authority in order to carry out this task. 
So some tasks that you do on a computer will change the system itself and the way that Linux is set up is such that you have a master account that can do anything it wants and it has user accounts which have restricted permissions. Um, so you'll have restricted permission to install things, restricted permission to delete things, things like that, things that can potentially cause problems. And this is a positive thing because if we use the master account which is called root, if we use root all the time we could easily slip and delete something we shouldn't have and the whole thing collapses. So this is a way of safeguarding against mistakes and also to restrict people that you don't want to have authority to do certain things. So again uh, this sudo command is a bit like asking your boss at work for permission to do something that you're not allowed to do under your own merit. Okay so we've got sudo apt update so this is going to go and talk to the repositories find out what they've got and update a list that's kept on this particular computer so we've done, we've done that the next thing is we want to request if it's got the particular program that we want so uh, because we're just making a request we don't need sudo for this so apt search QSS TV so we we're calling the program apt to do a search for the program called SSTV right simple as that very easy and once you've done this a few times you'll find it really quick and easy to do so away it goes it does a full text search for the term that I've used there QSS TV and it's found something it's just found one item QSS TV is the name of it slash stable so this means it's a, a stable program it's not in development it's not being faffed with it's not in beta testing it's a stable program it's issue number 9.2.6 etc etc um, there's a note underneath it's QT based slow scan TV and fax so this is the program we want uh, the brief description there has given us enough information to know that this is the right thing so we know it's there the next step is to install it so what we're going to do here is, because we're going to be installing it, we're going to need the higher permission. I'll just show you, uh, apt install QSS TV, that is the command to do the job, but as you'll notice here, it says permission denied, unable to acquire the package front end lock, are you root? Question mark. So my user, which is pi at raspberry, which is the default uh, user on this uh, on the initial default setup does not have permission to do this action so we need to use sudo and then the same command apt install QSS TV so we're now asking for permission and we're asking permission for apt to install this program called SSTV so we hit enter here now there's two things it could do it might initially say yep that's fine but what's the password and the password is your system password so when you put a username in and a password in that's the password you you need to use um, as default I believe the username's password it doesn't ask for the username though and uh, the password I believe is Raspberry um, but it, it will tell you that uh, in the beginning I've changed it um, but it's whatever you have as the password there so whether it asks you that or not it hasn't asked in this case because before I started recording I've already used sudo and when you use sudo it remembers the password for about 15 minutes and then it forgets it and you have to enter the password again so within 15 minutes if you're doing a few commands it will allow you to just carry on without having to fill it out every time and, and have it get annoying so whether you put the password in or not the rest of this will happen just as you see there it's saying we've found the package we want to install there's an additional package needed uh, with Linux it will call on other packages to be included as it needs them which is great and it's just making us aware of that here so two newly installed packages it's going to be uh, 1.2 megabytes of archive 
and after it's done it's just over five megabytes of additional space used do you want to continue so we type yes or no and because the yes the y is a capital letter that means that if i just hit enter it will pick that one by default so i'm just going to hit enter and away we go it's telling us what it's doing it's fe fetching the packages um, pack preparing unpacking selecting processing setting up etc and now it's done so that was very simple i appreciate this is sort of a, a lengthy explanation but very quickly you'll become used to this typing it in straight away and just typing the package name and away you go so now we've done that we can go to the start menu up here the raspberry pi menu and we can go to internet and here we have qss tv so as you can see it's a very quick efficient way of doing it i'm going to select that now and here we go so the program's starting up there are programs for windows and mac very similar to this and they all do pretty much the same thing uh, they have a similar layout the controls are very similar as well um, so if you're following along uh, on Windows as MMSS TV on Mac I believe there's something very similar as well so as a general guide this this will also help you with those if you have those systems but particularly if you're thinking of getting a, a cheap Raspberry Pi and doing this uh, this is mainly for you so a quick description we've got the main screen here which will show the pictures we have a little box here that shows you the waveforms and the uh, waterfall etc and on the left we've got a receive tab a transmit tab and a gallery of the pictures that you've sent and received QSS TV is slow scan TV and this is for sending and receiving pictures it's sent over the air using radio uh, radio waves and effectively it's like sending a picture and receiving a picture so on receive these are set to auto mode so if it hears a signal right now it'll immediately start receiving it and it paints the picture in lines so it will go across uh, weaving in the lines of the picture line by line until it's completed it will auto save the picture to your gallery which is great I would recommend we tick auto slant though as well so that it doesn't become lopsided if there's any uh, interference. Okay, on the left hand side here we've got some buttons. We've got a, a start receiving button. Ours is set to auto anyway so we don't need to worry about that. We have a stop receiving button. It's rare that we'd need to use that but if you want to stop it halfway through you can. We've got a restart receiver a save image and I think an erase there so a lot of these buttons are redundant because we've got it set to auto which is great we transmit we've got a similar set we've got start to start transmitting a picture to someone else we have stop send a repeater tone if we're doing it through a repeater which we're not load image so this allows us to access images on our system in order to be able to send them edit image snapshot if we want to take a picture with our webcam and then send it a picture of yourself etc absolutely you can and not sure what that one is so we've got the typical file options and help at the top with options one of the key things that's important is configuration so in the configuration file I've actually uh, already put my details in here from a previous iteration so first name last name call sign QTH locator etc we don't need to do anything with directories they're all set up as standard background color and things we don't need to mess with and audio interface so this is something that we do need to set up a little bit from your installation you won't have this PTT tone button ticked that does need ticking for certain sound cards for the one I use I use a, a ZLP electronics uh, mini pro SC 
which is an interface box. It has a wire that connects to the USB of the computer. It has another wire that connects to the radio. And that does require this box ticking for it to work. We also will need to tell the system that we're using a USB sound card. And when you connect to the unit, it will pop up in the list here. Although I've found with these, my system, um, the default playback that it's uh, set to will automatically switch to the interface when it's connected anyway. So before you start uh, altering settings, I would tick this box here, click OK, and then plug in your interface box, turn it on, and it might just start working as simple as that. Other ZLP boxes I've got do require going into the CAT control here and enabling PTT through a serial interface etc. Um, that's a bit more advanced. I believe the most common ones, the ZLP, which are built here in the UK, and also the Tigertronics um, only need this part setting up, not this. Uh, if in doubt use uh, the owner's manual for the equipment you've got please answer questions or ask questions below if you like and I'll try and answer them if I can. So we've ticked this box and we're happy with that. We need to find a picture now so what I'm going to do is go to the internet here and find a suitable picture that we can send I don't have anything particular in mind here, although this this looks uh, great. So I'll just save this image here to pictures, and we'll call this Icom because it's an Icom radio, and that's been downloaded. Great. If we now go into the system here to look for the picture and which is my home directory pictures icon there we go so that's it that's the picture now when you're sending things over the airwaves we need to identify ourselves so if you come down to the bottom right here you can actually click on this and this will send your ID with Morse code when the transmissions starting Alternatively, and more popularly, you can actually click on here to edit the picture. You can then go in and put some text in, and put your call sign in, your name, uh, signal report, and your location, and things of that nature can all be typed in. There we go. We can then save this to the picture itself. So save image file. Excuse me, save save file. That's and no, what are we doing? Here? What are we doing? Templates. Here we go. So if we call this call, save it there, we can then use a template from the list, the name is call here, it's found it, and as you can see it's put my details at the top left here, and you can get all sorts of fancy with this, uh, no problem at all. Okay, so, in fact if you go to gallery, the temp templates list here, this is the one I've just made. All right. Just looking to see if there's anything else. So you can actually add to it who it's to. So if I'm sending one to my f uh, friend Shane there, I can put his call sign, his name, uh, signal reports, etc., and so on. Um, and these can be added to this picture by typing in certain codes so it won't actually do it at the moment because um, I've not put 
the particular code in to do that. At this point we would, as I say, connect the interface box. Now I'm not going to do that because I've found that when I start transmitting it cuts off the audio so you won't hear me. But you would press, press start here on the left hand side and there goes the noise and this would be transmitted down through your radio. There is a progress bar on the right hand side as well. Okay, I've just stopped that because that's quite loud. But um, you can hear the sound it makes. Uh, the, the progress bar here will go all the way through to the end and stop. And that means your picture is then sent. The other person can then reply. You click on receive and you'll see their picture being received here. Okay, so uh, if you have any questions, please leave the information below and uh, I'll show a few examples of pictures I've received recently. Thank you.